Hi everyone, let's talk about genetic variations today. I'm going to be doing a summary of the most commonly learned mutations and genetic variations that you might encounter in class. I'll also try to briefly explain all of them and provide some examples of medical conditions that might result from these mutations. I found that the definitions on a lot of these terms are a little hazy and so I've chosen to mostly stick to the definitions from the National Human Genome Research Institute as a standard. I've also made a video where I directly compare and contrast confusing terms that I talk about here. So you can check it out if you want a shorter, more specific comparison between some of these terms. We are going to start small and work our way up in scale. So first off, we have point mutations. As the name suggests, these are mutations which only affect one single nucleotide pair. The three types of point mutations are missense, nonsense, and silent. Missense mutations occur when a change in a single base pair causes a change in the amino acid coded. For example, a mRNA that normally codes for the amino acids glutamine and serine could have a missense mutation, causing the last three amino acids to code for leucine instead. An example of a resulting condition would be sickle cell anemia, which is caused by a single missense mutation. Nonsense mutations occur when a change in a single base pair causes a stop codon to be coded. These often cause the growing polypeptide sequence to stop prematurely which results in truncated and often non-functional proteins. In this case, this mRNA could have a nonsense mutation in the first base pair, which causes the first three nucleotides to code for the stop codon. Because the stop codon has been coded, translation stops and all the nucleotides after it would not be translated. Cystic fibrosis is a frequently used example of nonsense mutations. Lastly, silent mutations are when the change in base pair in the mRNA doesn't cause the amino acid sequence to change due to the redundancy of the genetic code. So changing this A to a C here would still code for serine. These kinds of single base substitutions can also be described as single nucleotide variants. These are often shortened as SNVs. When a particular variant occurs in more than 1% of the general population, they are referred to as single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. Direct-to-consumer genetic tests, such as 23andMe, usually use these to calculate where your ancestry lies, as well as other traits you might have. Indels are another type of genetic variation. The word indel is short for insertions and deletions. The term is usually reserved for insertions and deletions of 1 to 1,000 base pairs. Insertions occur when nucleotides are added into a sequence. So a single base insertion would be something like this. Of course, insertions can also be hundreds of base pairs long. Deletions are when nucleotides are removed from a sequence. So you might start out with a sequence like this, and a single base deletion would be something like this. Deletions can also be hundreds of base pairs long. Often, indels cause frame shift mutations, where the original three nucleotide codons are disrupted. This happens when the number of base pairs inserted into or deleted from the original sequence is not a multiple of three. For example, the frame was like this previously, where the first three base pairs coded for glutamine and the last three coded for serine. If a new base was inserted here, it shifts the frame such that two valines are coded instead. The adenine or A nucleotide at the end would be tacked on to the next two nucleotides and so on. A condition that is caused by frame shift mutations is Tay-Sachs disease where insertions and deletions in a gene causes the encoded protein to lose enzymatic function. 
Now comes the variations that happen on a slightly larger scale. While the types of mutations mentioned earlier can happen with single nucleotides, the ones from here on out typically describe alterations to larger sections of DNA. A word you might come across here is structural variations, or SVs, when shortened. The definition of structural variation is one of the hazier ones. While most agree that SVs are large changes to the original genetic structure, Different people seem to have different definitions for what large means. I found many sources that define SVs as being variants that are larger than 50 base pairs, so that's what I'll define it here as well. These encompass all types of variations to the original DNA structure, including large insertions and deletions. A few other types of variations include inversion, translocation, and duplication. Inversions occur when a region of chromosome breaks off then rejoins after having flipped upside down. For instance, on this chromosome, there is a region flanked by a green band at the top and an orange band at the bottom. An inversion would mean that this section breaks off and turns 180 degrees before rejoining. You can see that now the green band is at the bottom and the orange band is at the top. Inversions can be split into two categories. Pericentric inversions occur when the region of chromosome that becomes inverted includes the centromere, as seen here. Paracentric inversions occur when a region of chromosome not including the centromere becomes inverted. Hemophilia A is an example of a medical condition that is often caused by inversions. Next up is translocations. Translocations occur when a region of a chromosome breaks off and joins to another chromosome. This is important to note because this can get confusing with crossing over. Crossing over is between homologous chromosomes, so they more or less have essentially the same genes, but with maybe different alleles. Translocations are between two different or non-homologous chromosomes. So the genes encoded are completely different from one another. Like inversions, there are two types of translocations. Reciprocal translocations are when two chromosomes swap regions of their genetic material. So here, these blue and orange chromosomes might both have a region break off and rejoin with the other chromosome. I drew these chromosomes at different lengths to highlight that they are non-homologous. Robertsonian translocations also involve swapping of genetic material between two chromosomes, but only when the breakpoint is near or at the centromere on acrocentric chromosomes. Acrocentric chromosomes are chromosomes where the centromere is way over on one side, creating a really long long arm relative to a really short region at the top. Robertsonian translocations will look something like this. The acrocentric chromosomes break and fuse at or near the centromere, causing one chromosome with two long arms and one with only the short regions. As the vast majority of genetic information lies within the long arms, the short chromosome is often lost and only the long chromosome on the left is kept. People with Robertsonian translocations are usually healthy, since they still have most of their DNA. Problems can arise, however, if that translocated chromosome gets passed on to their children. Down syndrome, or trisomy 21, is an example of a condition that can occur. One last note on Robertsonian translocations. Unlike reciprocal translocations, Robertsonian translocations can occur with homologous chromosomes. Another type of variation you might hear about is duplication. Duplication refers to when a region of genetic material is repeated, so you have more than one copy of that particular region. For example, this section that is bordered by the yellow band on the top and green band on the bottom can become duplicated, so that now there are two copies. Duplication refers to more than one copy, so tripling and quadrupling of a region can also occur. Certain genes can also undergo duplication, resulting in multiple copies. A popular example is the globin genes, 
which have duplicated and diverged into the alpha and beta globins. Duplication can result in regions called variable number tandem repeats, or VNTRs. These are repeats that are side by side, ranging from 10 to 100 base pairs. You might have also heard of short tandem repeats, or STRs. They are also known as microsatellites. The difference between VNTRs and STRs is the length of region repeated. STRs refers to repeats of only a few nucleotides, generally described as 2 to 7 base pairs. If a particular region of DNA, 1,000 base pairs or greater, has a different number of copies in different people, they are called copy number variations, or CNVs. For example, one person might have two copies of that region, another might have five copies, and yet another might not have that region at all. These repeats don't have to be side by side or in tandem. They can also be dispersed. Duplications can also happen with entire chromosomes. You might have heard of the term aneuploidy. This term describes all cases where a person's chromosome number is not the wild type 46. Down syndrome is an example. People affected by this condition will have 47 chromosomes instead of 46. Turner syndrome is another example of a condition caused by aneuploidy. Turner syndrome only affects females, and women affected by Turner syndrome will only have one X chromosome in their genome. As you have previously seen, this could happen with Robertsonian translocations in some people, but it could also occur from non-disjunction in meiosis I or meiosis II. If homologous chromosomes fail to separate in meiosis I, as shown on the left, or the sister chromatids fail to separate in meiosis II, as shown on the right, then some of the resulting gametes will have an extra copy of a chromosome. 